I'm going to talk about Girls Toys and Science, um, and my subtitle is Pink Stinks. Um, we've got a slight issue with the slides still, but I'm going to just plow on ahead anyway. Um, one thing I should say is that Pink Stinks is not my idea. Pink Stinks is actually the name of a campaign of women who are looking into women in science, looking into the way there's this absolutely terrible pinkification. Oh no, I've just told you what I think. Sorry, there's this terrible drive for girls' toys to make everything pink. Um, so, I wanted to start this presentation with a slide of a particular um, Jackie Fleming cartoon where there's a family gathered around the Christmas tree and the mummy and the daddy are sat on the sofa with a... Well, we're both very dungarees and they're, they're obviously a very nice family and the little girl is opening up her Christmas presents and it's a little mousse carpentry set and the thought bubble says I'd kill for a Barbie doll and I thought that would be a good way to start this talk but I couldn't find a copy of that so I found some matching his and hers baby grows the girls one says when I grow up I want to be a princess and the boys one says when I grow up I want to be a ninja and I think this kind of sums up to a certain extent the way we talk to boys and the way we talk to girls and how this can affect the way that boys and girls grow up with different expectations of what they want to be. So here are two nursery prints sold by an online retailer in the US, one for boys and one for girls. The girls' one says, you are a princess. Reach for the stars, smile, sing, laugh often, dream big. And the boy, boys' one says, ride bikes, build a fort, explore, climb a tree, catch, catch the stars, and so on. And I think you don't need to be a child psychologist to look at these and think the messages that children are getting from these kinds of descriptions are actually quite telling and are actually the kinds of things that kids are going to pick up whether they want to or not. Um, on the topic of child psychologists, they do all sorts of weird things, psychologists, and one of the things that the psychologists have done is they've taken neonates, babies that are really very, very young, and they've taken a very, very young baby and they've dressed it up in boys' clothes and then they've dressed it up again in girls' clothes. And what they've done is they've recorded adult humans interacting with and describing that child. And before the child has any recognisable sexual characteristics at all, like before they've got like, any hair, let alone a haircut, people use different language. They describe boys as active, they describe boys as brave, they describe girls as pretty, they describe girls differently. And this innate, innate is exactly the word I don't want to use, sorry. I was just stepping up a little bit there. This, this, this way we talk to children and the way that we interact with children and the things we expect children to do changes the way that children develop. And because this bias exists from before they're dressed in Spider-Man outfits and princess outfits, you find that this is just reinforced and reinforced and reinforced. And girls are expected to be pretty, they're expected to dress up, and boys are expected to do things that are more active. And you might think, hey, what does that matter? What does that matter? And you, maybe it doesn't matter. But let's take the world's most possibly gender neutral toy, Lego. Here we've got a Lego advert from the 1980s. <laughs> which was around about the time I was playing with Lego. I don't think I was ever quite that cute, but there you go. And what you see here is a toy that is absolutely, clearly not gender specific. And I thought that was the case until my friend Rachel told me that at her daughter's birthday party, Susie was maybe six, there was a pasta parcel, and the parcel stopped, and the child opened the pasta parcel, and out of the pasta parcel came some Lego, and this girl said, now can't have that, Lego's for boys. And the very idea that Lego is now a gender toy made me just stop in my tracks, yeah? Lego is clearly not a gender toy. Look at these adverts. These are people being creative, these are people building things, these are people constructing, these are people learning about things like uh, spatial reasoning, 
They're learning about things like engineering, experimentation. If I do this, then that will happen. This kind of structure behaves in that kind of way. These are the kinds of things that we learn from Lego. And if something as basic as Lego is now gendered, then there's a major problem. Um, there's a blog that went and found that girl. She now looks like this. So this is the girl from 1981. That's her in 2014. And what she's holding is Lego's new Lego for Girls range, Lego Friends. Okay? And you can probably guess from my tone of voice what I think of Lego Friends. But for those of you who haven't seen it, I've actually borrowed some Lego minifigures from some people when they're over here. Here we have some traditional Lego with some Lego Friends. The first thing you notice about the Lego Friends is the vet, which apparently she already had the gun. Oh no, my hair's come off. No, she's a bald Lego friend. Anyway. Point. Uh, anyway, so the first thing you notice if you play with Lego friends is that they don't fit with the rest of the Lego, yeah? You, they can't sit down. The Lego friends in the, with this nice Lego police car, they have to go in the back with the prisoners because they don't actually fit the driving seat. <laughs> the other thing you notice is the Lego handcuffs don't fit them. Which kind of limits your play options, I would have thought. But anyway, they are different. And the things that you imagine yourself doing with Lego friends are different to the things you imagine yourself doing with ordinary Lego. So, Lego friends have such useful construction things as the Lego cupcake. And there's the Lego hairbrush. And other quite clearly complicated things that you've got to teach girls about science and the way things fit together and about causality and all the things that other people learn about Lego, through Lego. What girls learn about through Lego is brushing their hair, making cupcakes and so on. And you might not think this is important, um, you might not think this is a big thing, but um, I don't often find myself quoting the current government, but Jenny Willett says, she's the Consumer Affairs Minister, says, boys who have routinely experienced a sense of accomplishment associated with designing and building something which you can often come from playing with what must be seen as a boy's toy, feel more at home with subjects such as maths and science, which use such skills more. And that is actually coming from the government. And the headlines that came out of this, there was a big meeting where they were talking about this for scientists, developmental psychologists, so but headlines like, um, why dressing your daughter in pink damages the future of the economy, which I think is a, a good headline. And perhaps one we should see more of, not being a huge fan of pink myself. Okay, so the pinkification of the world has spread to the extent that certain shops have girls' sections and boys' sections. And this is a letter that my friend Eliza wrote to a shop called The Entertainer. And Eliza says, Dear The Entertainer, I don't like how you say girls can't do science. I like science a lot and I'm a girl. Toys are for everyone. Yours sincerely, Eliza Field Corston A6. She's got a picture of an experiment down here with test tubes and so on. Interestingly, the entertainer has since Eliza's letter, maybe as a result of Eliza's letter, gone gender neutral. They still have a pink section and a blue section because they couldn't redesign their shops. But the pink section is now labelled creative play and the blue section is now labelled constructive play. Hamleys has also stopped having a girls' floor and a boys' floor, apparently, as a result of campaigns from people like Pink Stinks. But it's not finished. The campaign is not over. There are more gender-neutral toys, but there are still attitudes that pervade the lives and times of our six-year-olds. Here we have Stanley and Henry, and Stanley, for his sixth birthday party, turned the entire house into a laboratory. And they had a science-themed party, and at this science, science theme party, they made slime and they did all sorts of stuff like that. But one of his school friends, age six, refused to come to a science theme birthday party because she said science was for boys. And I think if that's happening in 2013, in November, then there is something that is wrong with kids' toys and science and the way we sell stuff to kids. And, and before we finish, I'd like to just point out what I like to call the pink telescope trap. You might think that because you can buy pink telescopes and microscopes, science is for girls. However, you might not see this in, uh, in the girls' telescope has a magnification of 90 times, and the grey one has a magnification of 250 times, and this one has 525. So, pink 
not only stinks, it's also crap. <laughs> Same is true to microphones. Microscopes? Microphones, scopes, I don't know. Um, so, if you're going to do science for girls, you have to be aware that sometimes the stuff that's aimed at girls is just not as good. I've heard tales of chemistry sets for girls which have fewer chemicals than the ones for boys. There are toy laptops for girls which have fewer functions than the so-called boys one. The difference being the girls one is pink and crippled. So, I'm going to finish with another Jackie Fleming cartoon, unlike the one that I wasn't able to show you to begin with. Um, be a better trained driver, I'm going to be a brain surgeon. And hand over to Rachel. Oh, well done, Anna.